So I'm here in Berlin and I'm super excited. Why? Because I'm about to test what is potentially the best augmented reality technology on the market today. You've all heard of HoloLens and Magic Leap, but I'm going to try out the ODG glasses version R9. Up until now, ODG have only sold to the military and to NASA. Six years ago, they started building these glasses specifically for consumers. Uh, as far as I know, the only thing that's been tested, or the only ODG glasses that have been tested online, demonstrated, is version 7. Uh, but I've been lucky enough to be invited to try R9. Okay, so who are ODG, or Osterhout Design Group, in under 30 seconds? They have 32 years of augmented reality experience. In 1984, they developed PVS7 night vision goggles, and in 2004, they created AR glasses for the military. They've been successfully selling to NASA, the US military, and they actually look like wearables, glasses you would actually wear. As the name suggests, Ralph Osterhout is the founder of ODG. He's a super billionaire genius, also known as the Real Life Q, because he's designed and built equipment that appeared on James Bond, The Spy Who Loved Me, and Never Say Never Again. He has over 200 patents to his name. In 2012, he made $150 million for selling AR patents to Microsoft, and he's since whacked in $60 million into building the glasses you see now, ODG R9. And need I say any more? So, I agreed to meet ODG at AWE, or Augmented World Expo, which is getting more and more popular in amongst the AR community. Have a listen to this. We all believe a new wave of computing is coming. AR and VR are giving superpowers to the people, and it will swallow all personal computing as we know it. So AWE's Moonshoe is a little bit out there, but it's to have 1 billion active AR users by 2020. Okay, now let's check out ODG's AR glasses. I'm with Patrick from ODG, and we're here to discuss um, the glasses, which is the latest iteration at the moment. Yeah, so these are our prototypes. These are, um, we're calling it Project Horizon internally, it's the R9 glasses. In my previous video, all of the comments on YouTube, everybody's complaining about the field of view in the hollow lens, and it's, it's pretty poor. Um, I've, I've actually tested this, and the field of view is 50 degrees, and it actually feels a lot more than 50 degrees, it's really yeah. wide. It covers most of your field of view, basically. Two, uh, two 1080p displays to each eye, okay. so it's offering a 4K experience. Unfortunately, ODG doesn't have a native record, so we've had to use this iPhone mount. So now for a real look at how the holograms appear. As you can see, the spatial and geometric tracking is very good. But what really strikes me with these AR glasses is the accuracy of the positioning. Look at how these real life objects sit so effortlessly with the holograms. Now remember, these square boxes are real life objects. The marbles and the shadows of the marbles are holograms. I'd say it feels like the field of view issue has been solved because, to give you an idea, um, that's as far as I can see uh, with my normal sight with the glasses on, and that, where my hands are now, is where the field of view is. This was one of the weirdest things I've ever experienced. When I moved the label printer, I actually thought the top was opening but it wasn't, it was a hologram. So it actually felt like my reality had been altered because the weight of the hologram or the label printer wanted to tip my arm over. What really impressed me about this was just the slightest move of my arm or even say uh, like a deep breath and the label printer top would move in situ with the rest of the label printer. So Sony have recently patented video playback, video playback through a contact lens. And these contact lenses have been tested in rabbits. When you, know, when you blink your eyes, the kinetic energy will actually recharge. Mm. If, let's say ODG sign a deal with Ray-Ban and you can get these into Ray-Bans and they become a fashion accessory. So this is ODG's interface with all of the apps you would expect, such as email, text messaging and teleportation. Now, are you telling me that shoving a tiny smartphone in front of your face is better than this? I can walk around with these glasses rather than working, sitting down, and the field of view is hundreds of times larger than that of my phone. How about Fantasy World? Created a whole new optical system since our R7s. Wow. This is uh, Fantasy World from LG. Now, unfortunately, ODG couldn't give me the uh, actual video that I watched, so I downloaded this directly from um, LG's website. So this is full 3D uh, stereoscopic and I've got to say the quality is breathtaking. When the, those bird-like creatures kind of flew towards my face, I really felt like I wanted to move out of the way. That's behind it. That is amazing. <laughs> 
All right, so this is a uh, Otoy experience. It's a 72K spherical cube. Okay. Um, it's going to be the equivalent of a 7K experience when you actually account for the motion sensors as well. So wow. okay. extremely high resolution. Okay. Um, and uh, so go ahead and, and you can kind of look around. And this wow. is all using uh, Otoy's light field rendering technology. I literally want to, uh, want to grab. So to conclude, ODG is really, really good. Definitely one of the best AR techs I've tried, and the 50 degrees field of view is by far the best of any AR tech that I've tried. Um, since I started recording this video a few weeks ago, ODG have just received the largest Series A funding of any AR company on the planet, uh, $58 million. So that shows they're a real serious player. Um, the other thing I really like about ODG is that they've got, they're pretty much primed and ready to offer VR, and they have a modular design so you can fit lots of different types of other devices onto the ODG glasses, something I haven't had time to cover in this video. Now onto the cons. Um, the, I found it very heavy on my nose, so after literally five or six minutes I could really feel the bridge of the glasses on my nose. Um, they gave off quite a lot of heat at the top, but I think these are issues that will get resolved in future iterations. Um, but the main problem for me was that there was no gesture control. So with the HoloLens and other AR headsets, you've got uh, joint tracking and finger tracking. But with ODG, it's a small trackpad uh, mouse on the top of one of the uh, on the top of the head-mounted display. So that was one of the real disadvantages. But overall, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are some real big advantages over a lot of the other major players. So watch this space. So now for a quick glimpse into the future of AR. So first of all, we've got um, AR and VR porn, which I'm sure you're all very excited about and it already has taken off. Um, then we've got companies such as Realities.io who are using photogrammetry to take areas of scenery that you can then travel to that may be hard to get to, such as the International Space Station. Then we've got companies such as Meta who are using uh, this glass brain from UCSF, which is awesome. Uh, Meta are also doing hand modeling um, using spatial computing, which is way more advanced than anything I've ever seen. Um, then we've got AR shopping. Uh, tilt brush in, the, in AR rather than in VR, so you can actually create uh, shapes and art in, in the real world, which is awesome. Then we've got 3D hollow calling, which is going to be an essential part of augmented reality, I believe. Um, and finally, we've got 5G. In 2020, when 5G is released, hopefully early 2020s, um, we're going to have ultra low latency, ultra low bandwidth, and that will be the real breaking point, I think, for AR.